go back to the filth. I'm coming away from the filth to some sort of harsh realism, but we'll go back to the filth at the end, so don't worry. No, no, bro. <laughs> no, no, bro. No, no, bro. Uh, right, the, the, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, there's kind of three poems that I wrote completely separately, but afterwards I've kind of realised that it, they do kind of link in, so it's going to be something that's in development. Uh, so the first one was um, a poem called The Denial of an Aging Disgrace, which I'll do first. And it kind of leads into the perspective of the woman he used to be with, and then it kind of leads into the perspective of the oldest son. You'll see what I mean, I'll kind of go through the three of them. So this is the first one. Where's the fucking Rizzlers, man? I just need a fucking smoke to take the edge off starting with just one almighty talk. This week's been shit, I have to say. Today's been much the same. Let's smoke till I can't see her face and can't recall their names. She said that I'm an addict, yeah? What does she fucking know? A few pills every weekend and a little bit of blow. A split for breakfast every day to help me on my feet and a couple more at bedtime, but that's just to help me sleep. Beers with lads at dinner time before it's back to work and a swift one after clocking off, it's an early finished perk. I love my life, there's nothing wrong, I'll never change a thing. There ain't a drinking game exists that I can't fucking win. How could she ever understand or find ways to forgive? She must think I'm some useless, selfish bastard fucking did. <laughs> There's things I tried to tell her, but how could I ever say? I think of ways to end my life about 15 times a day. She never lets me see the kids, it breaks my fucking heart. She says I'm unpredictable, but she knew that from the start. School, foster homes and prison never did me no good. I was born and dragged up fighting, surviving any way I could. I've been this way from being 14. Life will never be no different. Pissed and stoned forever from a 40 plus delinquent. Thank you. So that's the first one, Kenny, from his point of view. And then from her. She has two part-time jobs, works her fingers to the bone. A single mom with no support from him. She made that house a home. Empty promises of child support to help to feed her pack. Every bloke she's ever known's always fucked off and turned her back. She doesn't feel resentment. She never has the time. If she gets an hour to herself each day, she swears that she'll be fine. A gas and electric run on meters and she's got her ears on both. She tops them up religiously for all the good it's worth. Now she's back in the emergency and there's nothing in the tank. She can't afford to eat, so she relies on the food bank. One sound, hang on, hang on. Throws the fuck up in <laughs> The pay girl loans build up and doorstep lenders come knocking. The interest repayments they charge are completely fucking shocking. Exploiters of the working class, corruptors of the poor. However ruined she may be, they'll keep on offering more. A regular at a cash converter where she pawns a lad's PlayStation. A monthly chore in Jordan in this sorry situation. This ain't a tale of two cities, but a story told in every town. Though it broke her heart, she felt relief when her eldest got sent down. It's not because she's heartless or because she doesn't care. But now there's one less hungry mouth to feed for the time he spends in there. And the third part of this is from the, uh, the oldest son's point of view. He gets three square meals a day. It's his idea of heaven. She has a cell with just one of a bloke. It's from a family of seven. There's a TV in the corner. His toilet is on the shelf. For the first time in his short life, he can focus on himself. He keeps his son out of trouble. He's not trying to prove he's hard. Instead, he keeps himself in shape by exercising in the yard. He's working in a laundry, first job he's ever had. He promises he's never gonna end up like his dad. He wants to take some classes, wants to learn to read and write better that than twalking cars or selling drugs all day and night. If he can keep his nose clean and doesn't pull no stunts, 
His lawyer says he could be out again in 18 months. Cheers. Most poets have got loads and loads of love poems. Now, I started writing when I was about 12, and I went through that horrible, angsty love shit then, and I destroyed everything. <laughs> um, the closest I've got is a like poem. <laughs> and it's called Not a Soppy Love Poem. <laughs> I miss your face, it's no disgrace every time I've spent time at your place. When I'm with you, things seem exciting, though sometimes, yeah, they can be frightening. If I sit and think, let my mind wander, self-doubt creeps in and drags me under. When the weekend's over and I'm feeling flat, that's when I most crave to hear your laugh. Work and home life seem mundane. When my iPhone beeps, I hope it's your name. I ain't been soppy and I'm not loved up. I just like the way you drag me up when I'm feeling down and life's on top. You have the gift to make it stop. You're the one that made me, you're the one that showed me who I am. You're the one that made me feel again. You're the one that showed me who I am. The one who listens when I ramble on, but has the strength to tell me when I'm wrong. You're the one that makes me make you smile, but simply, girl, you got some style. Now, before I get back to the filthy stuff, I'm going to keep going with a light heart. Um, yeah, a lot of the reason why I moved up to Lewis initially was um, I. I I went through a difficult time, my mum was diagnosed with cancer, I became a carer, she died, I had a bit of a breakdown probably, and then fucked off up to uh, Lewis, where sadly I realised straight away there were no more drugs available. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way to be without a dealer. In yeah, fact, mate, how are a carer as well? Cheers, man. I'm glad you got the old clear, I'll give you a ring in a bit. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna do, I, did some some I, I did some points before I went up that were basically yeah. about my mum, just about that whole situation. They're not all very, they're not all sad because it, it were very bittersweet. There were real hard times, but there were some real funny times as well. And this is one called "One Last Cigarette and Endless Cups of Tea." Let's have another cigarette and one last cup of tea. The words exchanged in early hours between us so frequently. Talking, planning, shedding tears. We put the world to rights. Dark humour present often to get us through those nights. We joke selecting bad taste songs to play your cremation. The only way we could ensure we had that conversation. No subject was ever taboo releasing thoughts from head. He said it were important she'd be a long time dead. Delighted that we shared that view. It eased us through that time. Being there for you when needed. The privilege was mine. time that I did, which I've never actually given any consideration to euthanasia at all, or voluntary euthanasia, it's never been something that had ever crossed my mind, and it hadn't until maybe the last two weeks of my mum's life, where she'd probably at that point lived too long, and it really would have been something that I wish I could have helped her with. Um, find it for you, we've not done this one before live, so I'll just bear with me. These are all empty pages, by the way. <laughs> uh, this is called uh, Inhumane Treatment for the Sake of Existence. If you were a dog, would have put you to sleep before the loss of memory and dragging of feet, before the confusion and constant frustration haunted with the knowledge your life would be taken. 
the jumbled speech and declining sight, the fears that kept you up at night, the lack of food going into your system, the morphine drip and doctor's inspections, the saddened look, tired with the existence, we watched as you suffered trapped in cancerous prison. We listened as you asked with exhausted lack of amusement to end your life at the time of your choosing. Thank you. Uh, next one we do, um, being in Leeds, I'm sure this will relate to many. Um, has anyone ever lived in like, a shared accommodation? Yeah. Oh, you know this thing. <laughs> I've said that, they might be fucking awful now, you'll hate it and walk out. Um, right, let's see how this goes. Like a Mexican standoff, but eyes won't dare to look, as all housemates have forgotten whose turn it is to cook. Nobody can be asked in truth with the beers already flowing. It's like a game of poker, nobody's hands are showing. Another hour passes and faces start to frown the suggestion of a takeaway, no housemate dare turn down. Decisive action needed, so which one we're going to use, perusing 16 different menus. Christ, will someone fucking choose? <laughs> French, Japanese, Italian, Turkish, tapas or Thai. One pretentious cunt wants Lebanese. <laughs> <laughs> All housemates wish he'd die. <laughs> he says he'd have a Chinese, but they never really fill him. If he doesn't pick a curry, someone's gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> Why don't we order Nepalese or maybe Madagascan? Which curry do you want? Because I'm tired of fucking asking. <laughs> but I don't like coriander, then order it without. I'll give you coriander in a minute, comes the shout. Right, that's it. We've had enough. You can have a bit of yarn it. Or fuck off into the kitchen and go make yourself a sign. <laughs> right, who's up for a starter? Shall we get a pickle tray? I tell you, if I don't eat soon, I'm gonna waste away. That means we need some poppadons. How many want a nan? I can't believe it's now two hours since this shit began. <laughs> Everybody's getting angry and the tension's getting stronger. We're struggling and we don't think we can take it any longer. I could eat a scabby horse! <laughs> the housemate shouts up from the back. Another grabs the Xbox controller, primed and ready to attack. It's getting fucking serious. It's like a hostage situation. All eyes fix on the pretentious cunt now in a state of isolation. If you were more decisive and much less of a prick, <laughs> wouldn't still be waiting here feeling like we might be sick. Just dial the fucking number, ask how much it's gonna cost. Remember, give directions or this last time they got lost. <laughs> Hello, God, Chris. Uh, no, <laughs> Two more. Two more. Ooh, ooh. Right, one on the top. Okay. Right, I'll do it. I'll do a slightly quite a difficult one. Um, yeah, this is one just called Soundbite. Um, Image projection, ratings, war, propaganda tactics, ultimate score, positive viewing, negative news, reporting live edits of pro-Western views, justification of fiction or fact, morality questioned with each passing act, so-called friendly fire claims, victims once more, costly mistakes and a theme of the war, like millions before then, the innocent fall, effects on world living will never be small, reinforcement jobs, rebuild operations, mounting costs fell by so many nations. Just to, just to kind of explain this one, um, I've, I've, I've got this prepared just in case I get questioned by the police as well, really. Um, this... Uh, no, no, no. Don't mention Jimmy Savile, does it? No, 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 he did, right. but I've edited it. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he recalled Jimmy Savile did me wrong when I changed it. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah, I've lost, lost my shirt before. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I, just, I actually just got flat, what, flashbacks to when I wrote a poem about um, having sex with Siamese twins. Dear Jimmy, can you join the clint? <laughs> it's one I'm never going to actually read out to anyone live because even I. So, you know, when you read something, you think, oh, no, no. 
no, no, that's going in that box and staying there. Um, you find Jimmy in there. Same box, same box. So yeah, this, this poem was actually done as um, a text message to a previous girlfriend, and it's not the reason why we split up. Um, yeah, he says. She encouraged all this kind of shit, so it's kind of partly her fault, officer. Oh, there it is on front. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've had a lot of female friends over the years that have kind of complained about the guy at the wave and how he doesn't really open up and he doesn't like to say what he wants and he won't ever tell me about what he fantasises about and all that kind of shit. Now, I've never really had any of those kind of problems. <laughs> so when the girlfriend at the time, we'd not seen each other for maybe three or four weeks, and I got a text on like one Saturday morning saying, when we get together at the weekend, what are you gonna do to me? Well, that was it, you know, I, I just replied and this is it. <laughs> <laughs> As my eyes open this morning, something stirring in my pants. There was a huge erection that crept to fuck your mouth. Enormous my desire to pleasure you again, to tease and bite your nipples, and spank you one through ten. Hands moving over body. I'm really trying hard not to look at anyone while I do this. <laughs> Them. Hands moving over body, caressing inner thighs, kissing over stomach and nibbling down your sides. Hot breathing over pussy, lapping in between your legs, sliding hands under your ass as you thrust towards my head. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inserting fingers deeply to bring you off again, on fire my cock twitching, a horny fuck I am. Now it's time to turn you and place you on your knees, continuing cunt massage and servicing your needs. Forcefully I grab you, hands tightly fixed on hip. I slip my cock inside you and feel your vice like grin. <laughs> That's seven more verses yet, so. It's not before it gets dirty. It's just a little Thrusting deep inside you to make you come again. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about this. I stop to lick your asshole and then you call my name. Sorry. Dirty boy. It didn't really happen, it just, it's just a poem, it's great. <laughs> Sitting on the edge of bed as you drop to your knees, eyes watching me so sexily, deep throating me with ease. <laughs> it's all with me delightfully, don't stop, I'm gonna come. Sucking at me frantically, for now we both are done. Resting now for minutes, blurry post orgasm I. Give me 15 minutes and we'll have another try. I can't wait for the weekend to do it all for real, to kiss, lick, bite and fuck you, and cop a many feel. The last thing I'd like to say tonight, we also have a massive round of applause for all our open micers. Sending to the crowd, uh, sorry, well, crowd, uh, verse in and verbal remedies. Oh, I'll do some shit, yeah. And I'll do some shit. 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 I'm clean. I'm clean. Get me on Facebook. Follow the mic. Get me on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I'm up in everyday. It's fucking. Just send me a message. It'd be really hey, nice to hear from someone. Cheers for listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>